In the previous video, I built a token bridge between Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. It works well, but it's not fully decentralized. Someone suggested that we could make the bridge totally decentralized with signed messages. I never used signed messages before, but this could be a great use case, so let's try! If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. I already built a token bridge, but it has a problem. It works like this. First, the sender of a token sends his token to a bridge smart contract on Ethereum. The token is burned and an event is emitted with the details of the transfer. An API listens to these events and when it receives one, it sends a transaction to the other blockchain with the details of the transfer. When the bridge smart contract on the other blockchain receives this transaction, it means new tokens and send them to the recipient of the transfer. The mint function of the bridge smart contract that creates new token can only be triggered by the private key of the API, but this is not decentralized. If the API is hacked, it can send some bogus transaction and our bridge will be broken. If you want a longer explanation of how this token bridge works, you can refer to this other video. Otherwise, if everything is clear, we can move on to the next section where I will show you how we can make the bridge fully decentralized. If you own a private key, you can use it to sign Ethereum transactions. But what most people don't know is that you can also use this private key to sign any arbitrary message, not just Ethereum transactions. And later, anyone can verify that the message was signed with the address of that private key. The first step is to create a message. You can put whatever you want in it, but it's better to use a structured format. So in our case, we will have the address of the sender, the address of the recipient, the amount, then a nonce to prevent transfers to be processed twice. The next step is to hash this message. We could sign the message directly, but for big messages, the signing algorithm might take more time. With a hash that always has the same length, we can guarantee that the time for signing a message will remain constant, no matter the size of the message. Once we have our hash, we will create a signature. In order to produce this signature, we need to have a private key. The whole process will take place by the sender of the transfer. Once the signature is created, the sender will send a transaction with the parameter of the transfer, the signature, and the tokens will be transferred to the bridge contract. After that, the bridge contract emits a transfer event with the parameters of the transfer and the signature. The API detects this event and forwards all the info to the bridge smart contract of the other blockchain by sending a transaction. The bridge contract of the other blockchain is going to check that the signature is correct and if that's the case, it will mint new tokens. If our API is hacked and sends a bogus signature, the bridge smart contract will realize that the signature is wrong and will not process the transfer. Okay, so next, let's see how we can code this. So this is the code of the project on GitHub. This is a truffle project. And we're gonna start by the script that start the whole process. So it's this one, ETH BSC transfer. So you need to replace this by the private key of the sender of the token. And first here we define a nonce. So this is the responsibility of the sender of the token to manage its own nonce. It needs to be incremented for each new transfer. Then here we get a, refer a pointer to the bridge smart contract that was deployed on Ethereum. We specify the amount of token to be transferred. And here, that's where we build the message. So we define the different parameters of our transfer. So first, the sender of the token, the recipient, the amount, and the nonce. And we're gonna hash this together with Solidity SHA-3. And if you see some old code example of Solidity SHA-3, you will see an array instead of an of different object like this. So this is the up-to-date notation. So don't use the old array notation, it will not work. And after we transform this hash into a hexadecimal string because that's the format that is required after. And after we are going to sign our message hash. So we use this function web3.is.accounts.sign. So there are different ways to sign a message with Web3, but the one you want is this one because it doesn't require you to be connected to an Ethereum node and have some accounts unlocked. You can do it even if you don't run your own node 
you just have to provide the private key, the message, and it returns an object and we're interested in the signature. And so this signature is related to the message that we defined before. So after we are going to call the burn function on our bridge smart contracts and we pass it the parameters of our transfer. So the recipient of the transfer, the amount, the nonce and the signature, uh, by the way, in this case, the sender and the recipient of the token are the same address. So this is just to make it more simple, but of course it can be different address in reality. Okay, so next we are going to see the burn function in the bridge smart contract. So we go to bridge base and here this is the function we're going to call to initiate the transfer. So here the recipient of the transfer, the amount, the nonce and the signature. So the solidity type for the signature is bytes. And first we make sure that this transfer was not already processed. And for that we have a mapping here, process nonce. And so this is stored per address. And after we update the process nonce mapping, and after we burn the token of the sender, and we can do this because the bridge smart contract is the admin of the token. So he has the right to burn any token. And then we emit a transfer event with the detail of the transfer from to the nonce, the signature, and then we're gonna have the bridge API that is listening to transfer events. So if BSC bridge, let's see here. So first we define a Web3 instance connected to Ethereum, then to Binance Smart Chain. Then we need to define a private key for the API. And we add this private key to Web3 so that we can sign transaction. Then we define pointer to the bridge smart contract on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, and then we listen to the transfer event on the bridge smart contract of Ethereum. And every time we receive an event, so this callback here is going to be executed. So here we extract all the parameter of the event. And here we build a transaction object by calling the mint function on the bridge smart contract on Binance Smart Chain. But at this stage, we don't send the transaction. We just build a transaction object. And then we estimate the current gas price and the current gas cost of this transaction. Then here we build the parameter for the transaction data. And that's here that we actually send the transaction to the bridge contract. And after we console log the result. And so next we're going to come back to the smart contract to the bridge contract. And we're going to see the mint functions. That's what we execute. So we pass the detail of the transfer, including the signature. Then we're going to compute the message hash. So first, Ketchak 256, all of this, this is equivalent to Solidity SHA-3 in JavaScript. But this is not enough. We need to pass this to another function, which is here. Because in JavaScript, when we call the sign function, didn't sign directly our hash, but actually it rehash everything. It was a hash of a hash. The first element was this string, theorem sign message, and after our hash. And if you see some code example, you will see that they add another element, the length of the hash between Ethereum sign message and hash. So at first I tried to put the length of the hash also, like I saw in the example, but it didn't work. So for me, this is what worked. And so after we come back here, so we have our message hash here and here, this is where we're going to make sure that the signature matches. So let's see where we have this function recover signer. So let's go down. We pass the message hash, the signature. And first we are going to call this function split signature. So here we're going to need some assembly to extract three parameter of the signature R, S and V. So I spare you the technical detail, but we do need this three parameter in order to verify our signature. So we get this parameter here. And after we use a built-in function of Solidity EC recover. So we pass the message and the parameter of the signature, and it's going to return the address that signed this message. And so here we go back up. And so the address that signed this message needs to be the sender of the transfer. 
And so if the bridge API try to modify the signature or gives a wrong from address, this require statement will fail. So that's how we make our system decentralized, super, super important. Then we also make sure that this transfer was not already processed. Then if everything is fine, we execute this line. So we mint a token for the recipient for the amount specified. And finally, we emit a transfer event. Okay, so that's it for the code. Next, we're gonna do a demo. So first, we're gonna deploy our bridge smart contract on Ethereum. So for that, truffle, migrate, reset, and we're gonna specify the network and ETH testnet. So we're gonna do this on Rinkaby. Okay, so next we're going to deploy the bridge contract on the testnet of Binance Smart Chain. So I call this other network BSC testnet in Truffle config. Okay, let's launch this. Okay, so we have our two bridge contracts deployed. So next we're going to check the token balance on both chain. So I prepare a script for this. So truffle exec and first one is ETH token balance and we're going to do this on Ethereum. So the sender of token has 1000 token and for the recipient on Binance Smart Chain, it should have zero. Oops, wrong script. Uh, let's do it again. So it's B. SC token balance. Okay. Okay. Zero token. So we're going to send this 1000 token from Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain. And before we launch the transfer in another terminal, we're going to start the bridge API so that it can listen to the transfer event. So for that, we're going to do node, then the name of the script. So that ETH BSC bridge. Okay, so we are listening to events and now in the other terminal, we're going to launch the transfer. So truffle exec in script if BSC transfer and the network is on Ethereum if testnet. And in the other terminal, we can see that we detected the event and we sent a transaction to the bridge contract on Binance Smart Chain and it did process the transfers. We have the detail here. So we can actually check that the transfer works. So in the other terminal, we can check out the token balance first on Ethereum, zero, and then on Binance Smart Chain. 1000 yes it worked when i first built this token bridge i had no idea it was possible to make it totally decentralized i vaguely knew about signed messages but i didn't really know any use case now we learn that signed messages can be used to connect two blockchains in a decentralized way i had some trouble to make it work because a lot of the code examples of signed messages are outdated but finally i found a way and now you can reuse the template in my code everything is on github and it works with the latest version of solidity and web3 but there is a big lesson that i learned when i published the first version of this token bridge it had a centralized path and it wasn't perfect but I still publish my work and when someone posted a comment to improve the system, I didn't get offended, I just took it positively and used this as an opportunity to improve my code. There will always be someone who knows more than you and you gotta stay humble and always be willing to learn. So inspiring, I know. <laughs> and on this note, if you wanna keep learning some advanced solidity patterns and become a smart contract expert, check out this playlist. I will see you there.